Hi, I'm John Borhek with VM Sources Virtualization. Thank you for continuing with Module 4 of our complimentary course about the free edition of the VMware Hypervisor, also known as ESXi. VM Sources Virtualization specializes in providing the highest quality VMware training and consulting available anywhere. Let's look at what we're going to do in Module 4. First, we're going to discuss what a virtual machine actually is. Then we'll create a new virtual machine container. After that, we'll install the guest operating system. Then we're going to install the VMware tools. The VMware tools are a specialized set of drivers which helps to make the virtual machine more productive. Last, we'll use the VMware tools to set the virtual machine time to always be in sync with our ESX server, which if you'll recall from the last module, our ESX server will always be in sync with a pool of NTP servers. Virtual machines are basically containers. In order for virtual machines to be effective, they must be, amongst other things, isolated from other virtual machines, capable of running many common operating systems, and encapsulated within a limited number of files or folders. Whereas a traditional operating system may have hundreds of thousands of files, a virtual machine consists of just a few. It's also important not to forget that virtual machines all have hardware. Hardware like CPUs, RAM, NICs, and disks. Before we start actually building a virtual machine for real, we need to ensure that we're connected to our ESX server with the VMware vSphere client. Go ahead and make sure that the vSphere client is connected by IP address. Specify the user root and the very secret password that you specified earlier. Once you're connected, start the new virtual machine wizard by right-clicking on your ESX server and choosing new virtual machine. Always use a custom configuration. The typical configuration lacks necessary values to take control of your virtual machine, so it only takes a few extra seconds. Always, but always, choose custom virtual machine configuration. We're going to build a Windows 7 virtual machine, so we're just going to call it Windows 7 for simplicity's sake. We'll pick our only data store. We're going to choose virtual machine version 7. You're almost always going to choose Virtual Machine version 7. You would only want to choose Virtual Machine version 4 if you needed to ensure compatibility with ESX Server versions 3.0 or 3.5. Okay, Microsoft Windows is already selected for us, but not the right version. Let's go ahead and choose Windows 7 64-bit. By the way, take a look at some of the operating systems which are supported under ESX Server 4.1. Everything from Windows 3.1 all the way up to Server 2008 R264-bit. We'll go ahead and choose our operating system next. We're going to take the suggested amount of one virtual processor. We'll also take the suggestion for two gigs of RAM. We're going to choose the suggested network values as well, VM network and the adapter E1000. We're going to take the suggestion of LSI Logic SAS. We're going to create a new virtual disk. We'll accept the size. All right, this is the summary of our virtual machine installation. If everything looks correct, go ahead and click on Finish. And you have now created a virtual machine container. What I'd like you to do is right-click on your virtual machine container and choose to open a console. We always want to use the free-floating console as opposed to the console tab because the free-floating console will resize appropriately to our operating system. The Virtual Machine Remote Console window can be a kind of a tricky interface, but we can't really do anything with it until we turn it on. So before we even talk about it, let's just click on the power button and get our virtual machine going. Since this is a virtual machine container and we haven't installed a guest operating system yet, most likely it's just going to tell us the operating system isn't found. In order to install a guest operating system, we're going to need to connect to a CD or a DVD or some sort of ISO media. Let's go ahead and click on the icon that looks like a little CD-ROM with a wrench on the top of your console window and choose CD DVD drive. Notice we can connect to the DVD CD reader on your computer on your workstation. We can connect to an ISO image on a local disk which is what we're going to do or we could connect to the host device or we could connect to an ISO image on a data store. Those last two are advanced options and we'll discuss those some other time. We're going to choose connect to ISO image on local disk 
we're going to choose my computer we're going to choose the folder for operating systems and we're going to choose our Windows 7 ISO now that Windows 7 has been selected as our ISO we're going to go up here to VM and we're going to go to guest and we're going to choose to send a control alt delete so we get a soft reboot of the operating system within the console window all right let's choose some default options you'll notice that your mouse is going to be a little funky until you get the VMware tools installed so let's just put up with that and we'll choose our default options and click on next and then install now okay we're going to accept our license terms and we're going to choose on next of course this is a fresh installation so we're going to have to choose custom we're going to have to choose our disk notice that the virtual mouse always moves faster than my mouse that makes it possible to get it anywhere inside of the console screen it's a little difficult to work with but it's definitely possible to use from here on out, the Windows installation is very much the same as any other Windows installation on a physical PC or virtual machine. As you can see, we've fast forwarded towards the end of the tedious process of expanding Windows files. Most likely, Windows is going to have a few questions to ask us, and then the installation should be more or less complete. Okay, now Windows wants us to type our name. Still dealing with a clunky mouse here. We suggest using the top secret password that you specified with your ESX server when you installed it. Alright, we're going to set our time zone. Since we're sitting here in Arizona, we might as well choose Arizona. Some of you might not know, but Arizona doesn't use daylight savings time, so here towards the end of October, things can get kind of sticky when daylight savings time ends for the rest of the world. Okie dokie. Here we are at our desktop. We have to wait for some services to load, and then we need to install the VMware tools. Notice how in the lower left-hand corner of the monitor it says to release our cursor, press Control plus Alt. In order to get up to VM or outside of this window at all, we're going to need to press Control alt to release our mouse. And see, our mouse is now on top of the console. And we're going to come up here and we're going to install the VMware tools by clicking on VM, choosing Guest, and then choosing to install slash upgrade the VMware tools. Notice what it says. I'll read it to you. Installing the VMware tools package will greatly enhance graphics and mouse performance in your virtual machine. This is very true. It does a lot more than that, too. Our Windows ISO is disconnected as it mounts our VMware Tools ISO. We're going to click back inside the console and choose to run setup.exe. And yes. Okay, next. Now, you can do a typical install if you only ever intend to use this virtual machine on your ESXi. If you'd like to make it portable, possibly, and use it on some other versions of VMware virtualization, like VMware Workstation or VMware Fusion, you might want to do a complete installation. As we've already mentioned, VMware Tools installs a series of drivers which help make this virtual machine more productive. It helps graphics and mouse performance. It helps memory management. 
it helps to configure time on our virtual machine so that we can use our ESXi time source directly as our virtual machine time source. This is particularly helpful if we're not going to be using these virtual machines inside of a Windows domain context. Okay, the VMware Tools installation is completed. We'll click on Finish. Still using our clunky mouse. And it's going to prompt us to restart our system. Now, if you need to join a Windows domain or configure your monitor resolution, now may be the time to do it before you restart your system. Since we don't plan on joining a domain and since our screen resolution is fine for now, we're just going to go ahead and select Yes to restart our system. Okay, we'll go ahead and click inside our console and type our top secret password. And here we are at our Windows desktop. Notice that our mouse is no longer clunky at all. That's largely thanks to the VMware tools. We can move in or out of our virtual machine remote console window seamlessly. We could start applications. We could do whatever we want. What we really want to do right now is configure time in our virtual machine. Even though it's accurate, we'd like to go ahead and right click and choose to open the VMware tools. We'll say yes to Windows. And we're going to put a little tick in time synchronization between the virtual machine and the ESX server. The importance to setting up time synchronization between your virtual machine and your ESX server is manyfold. In Module 4, we defined what a virtual machine was, we created a new virtual machine container, we installed the guest operating system, we installed VMware tools in the guest operating system, and we used the VMware tools to set the virtual machine time. That concludes Module 4, a VMSource's complimentary course in the free VMware hypervisor. To continue with Module 5, or learn more about virtualization, visit www.vmsources.com. Thanks for watching.